Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna talk about top 5 best professional camera. Starting at number 5. Sony A1. Sony has four categories of alpha cameras, each dedicated to different needs. In addition to the A7 series targeted at enthusiasts, the A7R is for resolution, with the Sony A7R V delivering 61 MP. The A7S is for video and the A9 is for speed, the Sony A9 III achieving an incredible 120 frames per second burst rate. As the company's flagship camera, the Sony A1 attempts to tick all the boxes. And with its 50.1 MP sensor, 8K video and 30 frames per second bursts, I think it does an incredible job at offering all-round pro performance. Not only does it have the richest resolution on this list, it also offers 199MP photos via the magic of pixel shift, though, like the Canon EOS R5, it requires everything to be completely still in order for the mode to work. Coming at number 4. Panasonic Lumix S5. Just about any modern camera can handle a bit of video these days, and in fact, your camera phone is probably the best device for spontaneous day-to-day -day capture. However, if I need professional quality video capture, the Panasonic Lumix S5 IIX is the best camera for the job. The fact that it offers open gate recording makes it incredibly versatile, giving you the ability to output in any number of aspect ratios as the brief dictates. Panasonic has also made an interesting choice in not getting behind 8K in the same way that its rivals have, and I can see the thinking here as 6K really is the sweet spot. Whether you're oversampling your 4K, or shooting with the extra resolution in order to crop in to create different compositions or digital camera moves, 6K gives you the extra pixels without the extra processing and storage headaches of 8K. The S5 IIX is also unsurpassed when it comes to compression, codecs, and other output options. From Apple ProRes RAW to Blackmagic B RAW, for colon 2 colon 2 10-bit Allintra and Long GOP at all resolutions up to Cinema 4K, HDMI RAW output and SSD recording, as well as streaming it up to 4K 60p via LAN, or Full HD 60p via Wi-Fi, you won't get better unless you look at dedicated cinema cameras. Crucially, Panasonic has finally got the autofocus monkey off its back. This is its first camera to adopt phase detect AF and I can't put into words just how transformative it is. Previously I could never trust a Lumix camera to reliably focus for me, but now this is a camera I can use on a shoot without having to worry about the recordings. At number 3. Nikon D850. While I can think of better DSLRs for specific purposes, the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III is superior for pure sports, for example, there's no better all-purpose DSLR than the mighty Nikon D850. A resolution beast, offering 45.7 MP stills, it's still relatively fast for a DSLR with a continuous shooting speed of 7 frames per second, or 9 frames per second if you purchase the optional battery grip, meaning this still a capable performer for fast action like wildlife. The autofocus system is primitive, compared to the AI-informed AF of its mirrorless rivals, that feature cutting-edge subject detection and tracking, but what it lacks in intelligence it makes up for in robustness. The D850 may not automatically recognize every species of wildlife, but I know I can trust it once I tell it where to focus. While mirrorless cameras are technologically more advanced, there are advantages to DSLRs the big one, for me, being the much better battery life. I've never had this camera run out of puff during a shoot. It may be bigger and bulkier, but it's also more rugged and robust than mirrorless bodies and being chunkier means that it balances better with big pro lenses, too. Perhaps the biggest plus is that Nikon's F mount is fully matured, meaning that every lens you could ever need already exists and is going to be available cheaper than the mirrorless equivalent, especially on the second-hand market. Number 2 of my list. Canon EOS R5. I was so impressed by the R5's performance that I bought one with my own money, and it's the one that I take on my professional jobs. I don't know what higher recommendation I can give than that. So why did I buy it? First and foremost, the autofocus, it's simply the best in the business. Some people swear by Sony's AF, 
but Canon's system has never let me down while Sony's has. I've used it to photograph portraiture, wildlife, sports, macro, it's the most reliable AF I've ever used. Then there's the resolution. As the first 8K camera, this changed the game for video shooting though it does have recording limits for high-res video, look to the Canon EOS R5C for longer record times. It also has a great party trick, as it enables you to take 35MP 8K frame grabs that are absolutely pristine. There are more resolution tricks, as not only does the R5 take native 45MP images it can also take 400MP photographs using pixel shift, though you'll need a completely still scene. And it offers full fat RAW plus JPEG shooting at 20 frames per second, something that even the amazing Nikon Z8 slash Z9 can't do. And number 1. Canon EOS R6. If you've just turned pro, or are just about to, I think the R6 Mark II is a fantastic place to begin. I believe that Canon's R system is the best platform, and the one I have personally invested in, but its top-tier cameras are very expensive. The R6 Mark II enables you to get started in the R system with a great jack-of-all-trades camera, and begin building your arsenal of Canon RF lenses then, when you have the need or the finances, you can upgrade to a camera with more firepower that serves your specific needs. However, such are the R6 Mark II specs, you may never need to. The 24.2 MP resolution is more than enough for most needs, I've shot plenty of two-page magazine spreads, for instance, and the blistering 40 frames per second burst shooting outclasses some of the best cameras for wildlife photography. The 4K HQ video is oversampled from 6K for glorious crispness, and the phenomenal dual pixel CMOS AF is ungodly accurate as powerful as it is for still shooting, it locks onto your subject and holds focus like you've got a dedicated focus puller. Throw in the incredible in-body stabilization, up to 8 stops, and you get phenomenal performance for the price. The only asterisks are that the camera still uses SD cards, though this may be a plus, given that they're cheaper than CF Express, but they're slower and less reliable, and there are no options for third-party autofocus lenses. Check out this video description for latest price and more information. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned.